The late 1950s was a time of growth for both the American and global nuclear industries. The United States saw a rapidly expanding application of radioactive materials and devices in industry, medicine, and agriculture as a direct outcome of the knowledge and expertise gained during the Manhattan Project. With this expansion of nuclear materials and associated technologies throughout American life, the potential for radiological accidents or incidents prompted the Atomic Energy Commission to create the Radiological Assistance Program. RAP. Since the early days of nuclear power, first responders across the United States have relied on the Radiological Assistance Program for technical expertise and knowledge. RAP supports other agencies and organizations when radioactive materials or radiation-producing machines are involved in abnormal incidents or accidents. This is the news station, WNEP 16. Workers were transferring radioactive cooling water from one holding tank to another when a valve opened, releasing radioactive steam. Throughout the day, chaos and confusion reigned as monitors tried to determine exactly how much radiation was released. The morning of the Three Mile Island accident, the RAP team at the Brookhaven National Laboratory, BNL, in Upton, New York, was activated to respond and support the Pennsylvania State Health Department. Prior to the Three Mile Island incident, no full-scale exercises of nuclear power plant accident response had been conducted. Members of the RAP team were airlifted by helicopter from BNL. The Department of Energy committed significant resources to the response. DOE's personnel at the scene included staff from RAP, the National Atmospheric Release Advisory Center, and the Aerial Measuring System, AMS. The Three Mile Island incident permanently altered the course of the U.S. nuclear power industry, resulting in more stringent regulations and oversight. It also changed the federal response structure, leading to the establishment of the DOE-led Federal Radiological Monitoring and Assessment Center. In the immediate aftermath of the September 11th terrorist attacks on our nation, RAP, along with AMS and the Nuclear Emergency Search Team, NEST, was called to action by the New York City Department of Health to assist at Ground Zero in Manhattan. The request stemmed from a concern for the safety and well-being of the first responders and workers removing the debris from the site of the former World Trade Center towers. New York City was concerned about the potential for radiological materials, such as industrial radiography sources being in the rubble. A RAP team deployed that evening and worked around the clock until September 17, 2001. So RAP's responsibility was to primarily screen um, uh, the perimeter of the site, which was constantly changing because it was getting smaller. And they were also screening the materials that were coming out of the facility in these large dump trucks. Uh, they knew that it was nearly impossible to search the pile for radioactive material. So the, the best way to accomplish at least having a chance of discovering if any material was in the pile um, was to look at the debris that were coming out and then to secure the perimeter. In the months and years following the events of September 11th, the role of RAP evolved, as did the nation's overall radiological emergency posture. Bringing the science to the response community has helped inform uh, the first responders on some of the critical pieces of the mission. Um, and I think for the science community, in particular the RAP teams, understanding what our response looks like as compared to maybe responses in other parts of the country has also benefited uh, that community as well. The events of 9-11 also drove federal, state, local, and tribal partners to improve interoperability and technical collaboration in order to have a consolidated radiological emergency response. Uh, there was a spirit of cooperation right after the attack at 9-11, which was very unusual uh, because I think people felt together in what had happened, and we as Americans had felt very offended by what had, what had taken place. 
And because of that, it really created a spirit of cooperation, which I have really never seen since the, that time. In particular about the RAP and the FDNY relationship, uh, it's a, I think it's a really good example of how the scientific community and response community uh, can and should work together, and that it should be maybe a model for other agencies and other mus municipalities to try and adopt uh, to, to better serve the public, which is what our primary mission is for both agencies. On March 11, 2011, Japan experienced a major earthquake measuring 9.0 on the Richter scale and a subsequent 15-meter tsunami, which disabled the power supply and cooling of three Fukushima Daiichi reactors. Members from both RAP and Consequent Management assessed radiation releases from Japan's damaged nuclear power plants. This combined team provided technical analysis and advice to the U.S. and Japanese government officials to support immediate decision-making and longer-term stabilization planning. And so on March 16th, we got on a U.S. Air Force C-17 and flew to Yokota Air Base in Japan with a team of 33 people and all our equipment to do aerial surveys and ground surveys. The deployment marked the first time that NNSA's full complement of radiological consequence management capabilities was fielded during a large-scale nuclear emergency. The training and preparedness that we put in over decades, practicing aerial measuring techniques, practicing our ground measurements, and planning, doing monitoring sailing planning, all that paid off. So the team, even though they weren't operating on their own aircraft, doing things at home the way they're used to doing, was able to adapt and provide you know, timely, defensible, actionable results for the military and eventually for the Japanese. Comprised of highly skilled scientists and health physicists, RAP teams have armed officials throughout the country with the know-how to bring nuclear or radiological incidents to a safe and timely conclusion for the past six decades. RAP's highly trained scientific and technical teams have access to the most advanced technology available through the National Laboratory Consortium. The personnel are trained to provide initial assistance in the mitigation of immediate radiation hazards. There's strong alignment between the RAP mission and the laboratory's mission. Uh, certainly we're all focused on, as national laboratories, we're all focused on uh, enhancing the nation's prosperity and its security and really by using the great capabilities the laboratories have and the, and the personnel they have really to help us understand a situation or a concern or a threat and, and really to make sure that we know how to respond appropriately is very consistent with the laboratory's mission. By providing cutting-edge support and a deep understanding of radiological materials, RAP earned a reputation amongst the country's response communities as the apex of radiological scientific experts who augment counter and respond operations throughout the country. Generally speaking, I find uh, as partners in the federal government that the Department of Energy is among the most reliable and dependable. And I'm just uh, very happy to have had this opportunity to express that. And uh, I hope the uh, folks at the 60th uh, RAP are able to actually celebrate uh, great work, great people. Over the past 60 years of operations, RAP's experts have mitigated emergencies domestically and around the world. The Department of Energy and the National Nuclear Security Administration owe thanks to the past and current members of RAP for their vital contributions to public safety.